This is the Rise to Triumph podcast, and my name is Crystal Torres. I am on a mission to discover the key components of success of today's top TV and film industry professionals. If you are interested in becoming a working TV film professional or intrigued by the journey and are looking to surround yourself with the best industry minds, then this, my friends, is for you. Each week, we will have a chance to listen in on conversations that I have with industry professionals and explore the behind the scenes of what it truly takes to rise to triumph. Ready, get ready, yeah, yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Rise of Triumph podcast, and I am Crystal Torres. Uh, if you missed last episode, I spoke with Jeremy, and Jeremy Luke is recurring right now on This Is Us. He talks about, he also has a show streaming on Netflix called Small Shots. Go check it out. And um, he's just talks about his all well-rounded and ups and highs and lows of being in Hollywood and experiencing the business. So yeah, it's pretty freaking amazing and it's a really awesome conversation. So go check that out now. No, I mean, sorry. After you listen to my podcast right now with uh, Jonah. Jonah Chow is I don't even know where to start with this woman. She is just all around businesswoman. Um, she just appeared on the movie Gifted. She was last fall um, appeared in the film Keeping Up with the Joneses. Um, she's also recurring on one of my favorite shows, Being Mary Jane. So yeah, she's pretty like got it going on and. If that wasn't enough, she's also CEO of her own company called Career Activate. And Career Activate is emphasizing the act for actors. And there's a bunch of intensive home courses um, and coaching that she, through the program, leads uh, for other actors so that they can experience a career as an actor and not a chasing something but never actually making stuff happen. So Jonah walks her talk. She makes things happen and she shows people how she's doing it. And I have so much respect for this woman She's very humble, she's honest, and she's a freaking go-giver. She gives a lot to others, and I think that's also been a huge reason um, to her success, and I really admire her for that. So I really thank you so much, Jonah, um, for coming on and speaking with us, because she was really busy when she spoke with us at the time of this interview and uh yeah she like breaks it down she talks about acting the career um auditioning she talks about herself she talks about agents managers she talks about career activate yes a lot and it's all packed and so much i wish i had like five hours with her because we could have talked forever so enjoy guys peace why is it important for you to provide a platform for actors to succeed? Great question. So for me, um, looking back, uh, I think it started when I was pretty young. Um, long story short, when I was 12 years old, I like fell in love with acting and mm -hmm. I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, cause I loved making people laugh and think and feel, um, and so I ended up, long story short, I ended up getting scammed essentially by a supposed agency. Mm -hmm. It was one of those um, agencies that required you to take their classes 
and their classes were very expensive and yeah. as it turns out not very valuable or good. So um, because of that experience, uh, I was just very ashamed. Um, I had put my parents in a bad financial position um, and I was just very embarrassed and I, I just didn't know better. And um, for me, looking back, I think that caused me to be very protective of actors um, mm-hmm. as I got older. Um, and I think that was a huge motivator for me um, because I knew what it, was, it felt like to be so lost in an industry where I had so much passion, but I didn't understand the business side of the industry. And so um, I struggled for a long time. Um, and for me, acting was a very expensive hobby. And yeah. so, <laughs> you know, if I can <laughs> pass along anything that has helped me, um, I'm more than happy to do that. That's amazing. Um, I think maybe about all actors can probably relate to either getting scammed or feeling like they put money into something that maybe they were like, oh, why did I do that? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. And it happens. Unfortunately, as I learned later on, um, as I started working with actors a lot more frequently than um I expected. Yeah, I think I was reading, um, I was reading, I think you had it on your ebook. It said, for every nine actors who avoid a scam, one says yes. So I don't know, like, what's the the statistics there? But that's, you know, like, that hurts, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just very rampant. And um, to me, very, very disgusting. And so, it, uh, I think it motivated me to um, to create something that wasn't that, that was creating something that would be of value um, and that would really help actors and support actors in pursuing their dreams and accomplishing their goals. Got it. And then what you're talking about is what you created, which is Career Activate. Mm-hmm. And yes. um, is so so how does one, right, because like, I feel like I just discovered you and I wish like I've been out here in LA for like about three years and I was like I wish I knew Jonah when I first came out here Uh I feel like there was a lot of things I probably could have learned (laughs) or not have done um so what are what are some things that I guess maybe you tell your actors in class like to avoid or to be precautious about oh man (laughs) so many Uh, there's a lot of uh, do's and don'ts, I would say. Uh-huh. Um, hmm. Do you mean in terms of like, what specifically? I just think like, if, you know, how how do you know, like this Asian or manager is, is oh, like, okay. shady, or, you know, is like, you know, or, so, or, or just like different, you know, like workshops, or how, I don't know if that's, I mean, obviously, this would be your take, but you know, what are things that, or maybe for you that are flags, red flags that you see to avoid? Great question. So, um, I, for me, just simply like, um, when I was 12, had I simply Googled, (laughs) Yes. but I didn't Google it. Like if you Google the name of the agency or the name of the management company or whatever company you're considering, and then the word scam. So like that mm-hmm. name in parentheses and then type and scam um, just to see what is out there. Um, and of course you want to take everything with a grain of salt because sometimes someone has a bad experience and, you know, they're upset and it doesn't necessarily reflect um, the actual reputation of a company. Um, and then also I think backstage message boards, again, with a grain of salt, um, because <laughs> anyone post and it can be anonymous um, as well but backstage message boards some of the forums can be very valuable so if you just type in the name of the company Mm -hmm. then um, sometimes you can you can find out a lot of first first-hand experiences from from actors like oh I interviewed at this agency and this is what they like to see or here was my take or this is the vibe I got so I think that can be um, a great resource and then if you do have certain relationships with people in the industry like producers casting directors directors um, if you're you have like a couple friends that you trust and you trust their professional opinion um, you can ask them for their feedback their honest candid feedback on certain reps or certain companies. So I think 
um, any combination of those and, and just actors that you know and trust as well. Um, and I would say the thing about agencies is I make a lot of analogies between the dating world and partnering with an agent or manager and pursuing an that. agent or manager. Right. And just because, and so I think it's valuable to hear what others actors experiences have been, but at the same time, each relationship is unique. Mm -hmm. Like a, um, the perfect guy for you might not be the perfect guy for me <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and vice versa. So I think that goes with agents as well. Um, so just because an, an agent gets your friend out doesn't mean based on, you know, their brand and the shows and networks and people that they have relationships with might be great for you, you know, but might not be a fit for me with um, who I'm targeting. That's so, That's good. so good. I love that. I, love that. Um, um, I wanted to know, right, because you talked about not being naive early on and I think we can mm -hmm. all say that we're all a bit naive in some sense uh, <laughs> um how important is it for the actors in their career and their journey and being an actor um to have that business savvy mind I think it's um I think it's a necessity mm -hmm. um no matter where you are in your career it's so beneficial to really master the business side of the industry because there's so many talented out actors out there that are yeah are brilliant and so well trained and yet we've never seen them in anything yes. it's really unfortunate and it's not because they're not talented enough i think and then on the other side i think we see uh plenty of actors that maybe aren't as um <laughs> aren't as well trained yes. and have a show or they have uh, and they've mastered something that those other talented actors haven't I always say there's what I see as the guaranteed formula for success in this industry and I'm like look it's as simple as ABC and what is ABC uh, a would be a game mentality meaning you're persistent and you treat this industry as a marathon and this pursuit of the acting career as a marathon not a sprint and so there's a lot in terms of the mindset side the confidence, um, the, the deep, deep knowing of yourself, um, the persistence, aggressiveness with grace. There's a lot on the mindset side. And then the B of ABC is business know-how. So, mm -hmm. so knowing how to get yourself opportunities, how to build relationships, how to get the right agent or manager for you. Um, and then C would be craft, which is obviously very important as well. And for the way I see it is I can't imagine you being un you not being able to achieve your goals if all three of those you're very strong in. Mm -hmm. Now I can't promise a specific timeline. You yeah. know, it, there's a lot of factors, but I just I can't even imagine how you wouldn't be successful beyond your wildest dreams if all three of those areas were very strong. And so, if I always say if there's something that you want that you don't have, it just means there's something you don't know. It doesn't mean there's something like inherently wrong with you. Or I know for me, when I was really struggling as an actor, I I think I would really beat myself up and I would, I I turned it very internally. Like, why am I so fucked up? Like, why, <laughs> why am I so dumb? Or like, why, why can't I figure this out? Why am I not good enough? Um, yeah. I, can't anything. I can't seem to get any auditions. What's wrong with me? And it's really destructive. And it's because I, I just hadn't learned, you know, I hadn't worked on the business side. I hadn't been educated. And so it's been night and day in terms of mm -hmm. my, uh, my results when I, I really felt like I mastered the business side of the industry. So you talk about, I'm like thinking of like everything that's going on, on in your life right now, at least, you know, <laughs> like recurring on being Mary Jane, you have uh, Spider-Man Homecoming coming out. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, it's hard to be like, oh, wait, you struggled at some point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, because it's like, you know, you, everyone just thinks like, you know, they'll see you in a big film. Wow. Like, it just must have just happened. You know, like, oh, what was that struggle for you? <laughs> uh, well, you know, for half my childhood, um, you know, I my me and my family were living in a trailer park in upstate New York. Wow. And you know, money was very tight. And I remember like, you know, just having this um, you know, at my throughout my childhood as I um was grow in grade school, I just like fell in love with acting and I was like I, 
man, that would be so amazing if I could, <laughs> you know, do this for the rest of my life, yeah. you know, and that was something that at the time was just a dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, no, um, you know, I wasn't getting paid to do it. Uh, and, you know, for for years, like, I really struggled because I, I had such a hard time, like, getting agent manager meetings and getting um, getting auditions. And I didn't really know what my brand was and, and what I did well and what separated me from other people. So when I, even in the few times I would get my, an audition, I like, I would try to do what I like thought they wanted. Um, but it didn't really have a lot of me in it because I didn't know what I was selling. I didn't know who Jonah was. I didn't, mm. um, I didn't have that awareness and I didn't have, you know, objective people objectively giving me feedback and me uh, and coaching me on these type of things. And I would say, I think it's very easy to look at someone and assume, um, for instance, one of our, um, the coaching, uh, coaching clients in career activate, her name is Angelica Washington. Uh -huh. She uh, is a series regular now on an Amazon pilot. Um, and you can see the first episode on Amazon right now. It's called, um, legend of master legend. Yes. I know yeah. someone else in it too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I watched it and I think it's so great. It's, um, yeah. the writer's transparent. It's getting Creators good reviews. Film. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Oscar nominated John Hawkins. It plays her yes. dad and looking if you look at her. Yeah. If you look at her IMDb, you would assume it'd be easy to assume. I would say, Oh, well like overnight success. Like she had pretty much no recognizable credits before she had no TV shows. She had like no recognizable credit on her resume. And all of a sudden she put books, a series regular wow. on an Amazon show. And I think it's easy to look at that and assume like she got lucky, but like, you know, me and her, her peers, we saw all the work she was putting in, mm -hmm. you know, um, for a while, for, for a, like a year consistently, I would say in terms of, um, working on her brand, her marketing materials, uh, her relationships, um, getting really specific with who, what type of rep she wanted and partnering with the right rep for her, mm. um, networking, following up with people, staying top of mind with her agency. Like there's just so many things that she was doing and she was getting auditions and she was getting close on certain projects. And then finally, you know, she, she booked, um, such an incredible show um, and such a major opportunity and it's so well deserved and you know she was competing when she was testing um at, she was competing against um a couple actresses that had massive um resumes that had a lot of rep, uh, a yeah. lot of credits and for her she put in like the the extra um i don't think she'd mind me sharing this basically <laughs> she did something that i think uh, very, very few actors have done um, when it, and she knew this was a big opportunity and she basically mindset wise, this is where the A game mentality comes. She told herself, you know, this is, this is my role. Like I, I've already booked it. So instead of worrying if she, oh, would, yeah. getting, she was like, no, like when she would uh, go to her auditions, each step away, audition, callback, testing, all that uh, she'd be greeting people and the, her mindset was like, oh yeah, like I'm working with this person and like, <laughs> oh, cool. Like, yeah, like John Hawkins is going to play my dad and it's going to be amazing. And I'm so grateful. And like already being the, in that place. And then at the same time, um, the way her, she prepared is before testing, she actually memorized the entire script in terms of her dialogue, wow. the entire script. So she had a few scenes that she was, um, you know, she knew she would do, but she was like, well, you know, um, when they let, when they tell me I I'm, I'm booking this role, I'm going to have to have my lines memorized anyway. So I might as well start early. And it wasn't from a place of cockiness or anything like that. It was just from a place of like believing that this was the right role for her and that she was the perfect person to play this role. And so when, um, at that final level, when, you know, she's in this room with all these producers and the director and, uh, you know, she did her scenes and, and then they were like, oh, you know, do you mind doing this other scene um, for us? Uh, and she's like, oh, which one? And um, they told her and then she's like, sure. And they're like, well, do you want to go in the waiting room area and 
um, you know, prepare it. She's like, oh no, um, I, I actually have the whole script. Me- I have all my scenes memorized in the script. And wow. they were like, what? she totally <laughs> killed it, right? Yeah. No one uh, was going to compete with that. <laughs> and she's like, so I'm ready to go. I'm good to go. Wow. <laughs> and, they were, and I think they were like, uh, okay. And <laughs> sure enough, they're like, okay, cool. That scene, great. Let's go. And then she did it. She was completely off book. You know, she didn't even have the script in her hand, I don't think. And I think that impressed them quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. She, like had like done so much work on this character, and um, yeah, so that when she was in that room, her craft kicked in, her preparation and her agent mentality uh, kicked in, and it was the business know how that helped get her at that opportunity. But then, like all those other elements, A, B, and C, um, sh- it was very important. Like all those elements were were super important. Yeah, they all had to end up tying up together in a big bow. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I highly recommend people check out the uh, Master of, uh, Legend of Master Legend, and you can do like a 30-day trial on Amazon if you don't have Amazon Prime. And here's a fun fact. A lot of the streaming um, a lot of the streaming networks, like for instance, Amazon, when they, when they count their views, because you know, we know ratings and view count and all that becomes important in terms of whether a show gets picked up, uh, if a a show gets renewed. And um, she was telling us that uh, for Amazon and a lot of streaming networks, you have to watch till the very end of the episode for the view to count. Mm. You have to watch through the credits. Through Um, the whole credits? What? mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, that's, yeah, I, and I didn't know that about Amazon. So yeah, that's what she told us um, because the show had told her that's how they count the views. So it's a mix of the views, the ratings, um, you know, a few different metrics that determine which of the Amazon shows will actually get picked up for a full season. So um, All right. yeah. I'll roll through the credits next time. Yeah, that it will be her. So I think she is a great example of how the different elements work together, that ABC and formula, um, because I think she mentioned for four years previous to um, working with us at Correctivate, you know, she really struggled to have the right team to yeah. be getting opportunities because um, she had all this like like persistence and fierceness and uh all of that but it, it's just the business side that she was really lacking and then um yeah things turn around for her quite a bit and we're very very proud of her that's um, that's such a great story and you know one thing that I like listening to you say that story and saying hey I already got this role so I'm just <laughs> gonna do my job as the mm-hmm. actor right because I think so much of what I know for me personally, I can talk about like, you know, it's just like you trip on like, you know, feeling like you have to prove yourself and like showing them, you know, and instead it's just like, no, I already got the role. So I'm just, I'm just going to do the work that I would do as if I'm on set. Right. Yeah. Instead of like feeling like all this extra added pressure, like, cause there's already so much pressure. Oh yeah. Like I remember I used to always like, and when I'd be in the waiting room, it'd be the whole compare and despair, Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, where I'd look around and I'm like, and I would just get so, oh man, um, it was a mind trip. Uh, like I would, I would, um, I'd be like, oh my gosh, like there's that actor and I recognize them and they've been on all these shows. I'm like, oh, she's, she's so like, she's like way skinnier than me and way prettier than me. Yeah. And oh man, like it was, it was such a mind fuck. Yeah. And then, like, I remember, um, you know, in this town, um, I think with the pressure that actors are put on sometimes or what they put themselves through, like it can cause some interesting things to happen. I remember being in the waiting room area uh-huh. one time um, for an audition and this one actor, and at this point, like, I had worked on my mindset a lot more. <laughs> and she came out of the audition room, um, this uh, Asian actress that I um, that I knew, and she came out and she full on fist pumped. Like she went, yes, yes. And then like, <laughs> she's like, oh yeah. And then she looked around the room and she was like, oh, sorry. Good luck, ladies. No. <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, girl. <laughs> and, like, talk about, like, I'm, like, trying to psych people out. And I think, unfortunately, in this town, it can have that reputation of being really doggy dog and, like, 
um, because there's so many actors and so few opportunities. But I think that's why it's so important to have like a community of people that actually collaborates, that supports each other, because otherwise it's so easy in this town to, you know, I know for a while when I first moved to Los Angeles, I felt so isolated and, and alone in this industry. Yeah. And I'd always been fiercely independent, but it wasn't getting me anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's so important. Um, like, for instance, Angelica, the community for her in Correctivate has been so tremendous in terms of supporting her and mm. supporting them. And they've like helped each other get jobs and bookings as a result and referring them um, if it's a win-win. And I think that community plays such a, an important role because your environment in many ways shapes who you are. You know, mm. it has such a big impact. And so I think that support network becomes so crucial. Um, and it's really unfortunate that so many actors don't have it and that they treat this industry as like, you know, there's so few opportunities. And so um, I, I, it's all like I have to focus on myself and do whatever it takes. But, um, you know, the more you help other people succeed, it's, it's like with networking, the more you can help other people achieve their goals, it becomes infinitely easier for mm. you to achieve yours because you all come up together and you all support each other. Um, you will get like Ben, uh, Matt, I was going to say Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Momoa. Yeah, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. I was gonna say yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like, the, uh, and so many like um, Kevin Hart and his friends, it's like they started off together. They found that they, there's a lot of synergy and they continued to support and help each other all the way to the top. Yes. Now, how do you feel like, since a lot of people just move out here and don't really know anyone, uh, have what are ways to form a community? You know, because I, I feel like it's easy to say it, but then you're like, oh, like you know, if you live in Santa Monica and I live in on the northeast side of LA, it's like we're never gonna meet. You know, <laughs> it's just right. so. How how do, how does that? How do, how how have you formed your community? Ah, uh, sure. So, um, in terms of like me, me as an actress or correct writer, what do you mean? I would say as an actor, I want to know like your, a little bit more of like how you personally have developed that. Sure. So, um, there, you know, I'm in a couple, I mean, I'm in a few different communities and specifically in the entertainment industry, you know, I have my actor friends that I've either met, um, like friends as I met through acting classes, um, or just um, at auditions, that's happened too. Where mm -hmm. it's in the opposite, where instead of being competitive, like like we're giving each other tips in the audition room about like what we experience in the room, which is great. And I think there's a certain type of actor, you know, there's just a certain type of mindset of like that collaborative. And if if this role is right for me, um, it's great good for me. But if it's not, like I want you to book it, kind of thing, you know, mm. that I'm already friends with. So um, I would say. Um, that comprises of those. And also, you know, the, the coaches on my team, they are definitely an integral part of my community. Like we do masterminds, um, mm -hmm. regular basis where we bring up, we, we do like a Google hangout and then each of yes. us. Yes. Can you explain what masterminds is? Sure. So, um, masterminds, I think the word, um, originated a long time ago. Um, but then Napoleon Hill, who wrote Think and Grow Rich, which was, was one of the first personal growth and development books, um, he made the term a little bit more popular. So a mastermind is kind of like a think tank. It's like a group of people coming together um, to collaborate, support each other and work towards a common goal. So um, in my, you know, coaches mastermind with uh, the coaches on my team, basically on a regular basis, we do a Google hangout and each of us, and there's a lot of different ways of structuring a mastermind. So if, um, you know, whoever's listening to this, whether you're an actor or you're not an actor, if there's a group of friends that you trust and you value their feedback, um, the idea is that each person gets like their, let's say 10 or 15 minutes or however long you want. And they get to discuss and share, like, what is it that's holding them back in that moment? Or mm. what's a challenge they're experiencing in their career or life? And then the group, um, based on their perspective, uh, gives feedback, offers ideas, solutions. And what's beautiful is that each person brings their own unique perspective. And so a lot of times, it's really, it's, it's impossible to be objective when it comes to yourself and your career. Yeah. So it's so amazing to have other actors or other people you trust really um, providing 
like a more objective opinion and to give you a different perspective because we only see what we see. Yeah. And um, so that becomes very valuable. So the masterminding process has been hugely beneficial for myself and other actors. And then in terms of the other side, um, I had worked in, you know, casting agency, producing yes. uh, film festivals. Like I'd worked in that side and that's where I, I, feel like I developed a lot of the business know-how and on, on in that world um, I still maintained a lot of the friends I, I made during that time when I was working um, on, on that side of the industry mm. so that's a different community for me as well where it, it's funny getting to hear like you know like some pet peeves that my friends and representation have on a consistent basis yeah. or like it, it's interesting in hearing that side and um, you know, uh, like for instance, like one tidbit that I didn't know before, before, like I heard, uh, some of my friends and rep talking about is the, the like partially turned head in a headshot, like where some people it's like this, you know, they're looking over their shoulders yeah. and it's, you know, it's an interesting shot and it can work in very specific circumstances to, for specific purposes, but that actually for a lot of reps that can be a little annoying <laughs> <laughs> really so, yeah because you don't you're left kind of uncertain as to exactly how this person looks straight on yes because <laughs> head. and it's not something that I think a lot of actors would think about of like oh this will be something that some casting directors and a good number of reps will find frustrating <laughs> mm. and and I'll be hurting myself by by using this as like a main shot, for instance. So it's like an example like that, that I wouldn't have, you know, known otherwise um, for me personally. So um, like, for instance, I recently went on um, a big industry, big bear trip with uh, my friends on the industry side. And so each year, um, and I think it's great to, to get together and not just quote unquote network where it's not just like talking about business because I think it's so easy for us to just talk business, business, business. And yeah. um, with actors, agents, managers, producers, it's very common, but like we did um, an industry big bear trip where I think it was 38 of us. And this is my fifth annual. So in the middle pilot season where like, like, you know, pilot season can be pretty stressful for all people in the industry yeah. and anyone that's involved in pilot season. And so it's a great opportunity to just relax, have fun. And I think, the rule on day one, interestingly enough, um, my friend Randy puts uh, this ski trip together. He he's like, "All right, guys, like, don't just talk about business for real. <laughs> like, <laughs> fun, you know, we're uh, and just you know, like, and I love that idea of you know building a genuine relationship that's not just um, talking shop and not just you know like what can you do for me. And I think that's where networking just feels more icky, in my opinion. Yes. Now you've mentioned networking a lot how are ways that you can go about because I know I've heard you mention genuine connections mm -hmm. sure there's there's a lot um so for instance I think first it starts with mindset mm -hmm. <laughs> so and you can without the right mindset no like you can get a hundred strategies and none of them will be as effective so uh one way of looking at networking is looking at having long-term relationships. I think a lot of, a lot of times actors view networking kind of an icky way because yes. it has this bad reputation of like, like just giving, like shoving business cards at people and um, like, what can you do for me? And I think it's quite the opposite that the most effective networking is all about making it about the other person mm -hmm. and how to actually serve them. Like I had a coach um, named James Melanchek who um, he said, you know, we come into this world with like wearing a bib, you know, like yeah. uh, we're, we're wearing this bib and it's like, feed me, feed me. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, because we're babies, right. We can't really do too much for ourselves. Yeah. And it's like that mindset of like, like being given to, you know, and he said, you know, as we grow older, it's important, especially as we build and deepen relationship is to take that bib and put it around our, like put it around one of our arms and use it as like, almost like a server's handkerchief, mm. you know, and instead of like, um, give me, give me, it's how can I serve you? Yes. And so I like that visual. And when he shared that with me, I was like, ah, that makes so much sense. So it's this, uh, mindset of, um, like giving and serving. Mm -hmm. And so 
and I think that comes from a much more powerful place. So like, for instance, one of my favorite questions is, uh, well, it's a two part question um, is, you know, when you're meeting with someone um, or you're getting to know someone, you could ask them, you know, what's the most important thing to you in the next month? Like pick whatever period of time you want. And then they tell you in the whole time when they're answering this question, um, I think it's really valuable to be thinking, okay, what can I do to support them? Who can I connect them with? Or is there a resource I have that would be valuable? Um, and sometimes while they're answering, you already know. So you can already suggest like, oh, you know, um, I, I know so-and-so director, um, if you'd like, based on you wanting to um, attach a director to this project, do you want, would you, would it benefit you to, for me to connect you with them? Mm. Um, connecting people that should know each other is a huge way of being of service. Um, if not at the end, well, if like, let's say they say something that's totally in a different realm and you're like, Oh crap. Like, what <laughs> am I, like how am I supposed to help there? Um, then the very easy follow-up question to use is great. Like what's one thing I can do to support you in achieving that? Mm. So, very simple, but it's amazing. Like when, uh, when people have, uh, have asked that question, like the, people end up being shocked to even at being asked that question because it's not very often um, yeah. that people offer something like that. And so it already makes you stand out. So that, that mindset of, um, you know, giving instead of taking. So um, what's what Bob Berg, uh, author of the go giver, he, he terms, he coins it being a go giver as, as opposed to like a go getter. Mm. Can you and say the name of the um, author again? Bob Berg. Bob Berg. Mm -hmm. And it's the go-giver? Go mm -hmm. Yes. And then um, building off of that in terms of strategies, um, there's like it, you can connect with someone. Like let's say there's someone that you want to build a relationship with, like a filmmaker you admire. You know, there's so many channels nowadays to be able to connect with them. Um, yeah. If So, for instance, there's um, social media. There's email. There's you can find sometimes contact information on IMDb, um, a little nifty insider tip. If, if there's someone that's part of the WGA, the Writers Guild of America, um, you can actually write to them um, yeah. via the Writers Guild of America. So you can actually uh, send, a, like, let's say you're trying to reach a particular showrunner who's part of the Writers Guild or a particular writer. And a lot of writers or writer producers so you you send it you mail it to the writers guild of america and it's very easy to find their address online and then um you you put in care of um like and then you can put the writer's name and whatever uh whatever mailing address the writer has and and the all of them have a mailing address on file through the Writers Guild. The, uh, the writer, uh, the WGA will actually forward your mail directly to them, which is pretty nifty. That's so, so good. Yeah. So like, that's like a tip right there in terms of how to get a piece of communication to that particular person. And then, um, you know, when crafting your correspondence, there's a lot of things you can do to connect with the person. Like um, there's a few C's that I talk about. Like one of them is like connect on common ground hmm. is to, um, and like this is information that I um, cover in like this online networking home study course that I put together because I think networking, as we mentioned, is one of the most valuable um, areas to, to work on and hone. So like one C is connecting, um, based on common ground. So like, what is it that you guys have in common? Because uh, it's very true. People like people that are like them. <laughs> uh, like for instance, I, um, I love playing board games and flag football. Like that's, um, those are some of my like recreational activities that I do. Yeah. And so it, when someone is uh, really into one of those, like there's immediately things you can talk about and it's like, Oh, what's your favorite board game? And then, you know, you're connecting on this other level like that again is sometimes can be more genuine because you know, there's, it's not like from a place of what can you do from, for me? And like, where do you work? And I think that is, that's a very, in my opinion, overused question. I try as much as possible to avoid asking someone right away, where do you work or mm. what do you do? Yes. You know, because to me, who someone is a, as a person is more important and more interesting than where they work. Mm. Or what. And so that's another thing is like um, not just focusing on talking shop 
Um, so there's, uh, you know, an ex okay, so here's an example um, from like a networking success. So this actor named Lawrence Chow, who was a host turned actor, he um, had gone through our networking program and he sent a cold email to one of the executives at um, IMAX, so uh, who had just moved to Los Angeles. And um, he ended up getting, he had offered to take um, the executive to coffee. And then um, he, you know, he had connected on Common Ground, had done a lot of research on this particular person. And so they met for coffee. And the whole time, um, Lawrence's focus was, okay, what can I do to support this other person? Mm. And because um, this executive was new to town, he didn't really know, like, just his way around town, like where were the spots to go hiking and areas to live and just, you know, just the stuff. And Lawrence had lived in LA for a while. And so he, it became a conversation about like giving him, uh, he started asking questions like, Oh, what are you looking for? What type of, what type of uh, location are you looking for? What, what, what are the qualities and, and just asking questions and then giving recommendations. And, um, his new friend was so thankful and grateful to Lawrence for, for being, for being so helpful that he ended up inviting him as a personal guest to the Soho house, which is one of like, you know, it's this exclusive yeah. only restaurant uh -huh. <laughs> um, in like the Beverly Hills area. And, and so Lawrence said yes, and was really excited to go. And at the Soho house, his new friend introduced him to like, an agent at CAA, an agent at WME, um, oh. one of the uh, heads of marketing at Warner Brothers and like just personal introductions. And so for instance, one of the high level agents had offered, just offered to look at Lawrence's reel just to give him feedback, which obviously is a very um, great perspective to get. Yes. Such, um, like, you know, someone who's a veteran in the industry looking at his reel. Um, and like forming these new personal friendships and all this step and all, all that came about as a result of a cold email that he wrote. Um, and then uh, also just the mindset and and being so focused on being someone that helps as opposed to like treating that coffee meeting as all right, like I'm going to. I'm going to try to get as much out of this as I can in the next, you know, 30 or 45 minutes because this time is so precious and I don't know when I'll see this person again. It's like, you'll see this person again. If you, if you guys, um, if you're someone who, who tries to support this person and who focuses on um, building that genuine relationship. So there's so many different ways of building relationships. Um, That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Just need yeah. to do it from a genuine place where, yeah, I, I love that. Um, I wanted to ask you, right, because you had mentioned um, just like that inner dialogue, right, that one has with themselves and could be in a sense a self sabotage you know, like if, if you if you don't take care of yourself in the right way, how have been the ways that you have taking care of yourself because I feel like you can have all these business tools and everything but if you are not present in that right mind for yourself to show up I don't know how effective you will be in those other areas yes absolutely um it's so in terms of the a-game mentality um that we're talking about there's uh like for instance people always say you know you hear it all the time got to be confident you got to be confident mm -hmm. and yeah sure there's absolutely um sometimes you can fake it till you make it uh you, that's another commonly used phrase um but for me like Mindy Kaling says that you know in terms of confidence confidence comes from like knowing what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> simple it's like it's it's building up the evidence that you that that allows you to be confident. So what I mean by that is like, for instance, let's say um, before an audition, maybe have that list that you have on your phone or like I, I use a lot of notes on my iPhone, um, my like notes app mm -hmm. where let's say it's a list of reasons why you're like an amazing human being and you're a great actor. And here's like the list of evidence, like if, if you need it, you know, like, because sometimes you know, we start getting insecure and we start comparing ourselves to other people and we forget how awesome we are, you know, yes. and how, how, what our gift is. So it's like having that evidence to look at. It's like, oh, I got, 
this call back and I did book this and, you know, um, so-and-so director said this about me and, you know, just whatever like makes, helps you feel confident as an actor, you know, and, and the qualities that you have. And then on the business side, it's like knowing what to say when you're on that phone call or taking that meeting and how to prepare. Like for instance, um, let's say you're walking into an agent meeting. I think uh, some people wing it. Um, and I think winging it can work if you, if this is something that you've mastered, <laughs> you know, yeah. once you've mastered something, it becomes easier to quote unquote wing it because things become second nature. But if it's not, um, like I've worked with actors where, uh, they're like, Oh my gosh, Jonah, I've blown so many agent meetings. Like I had opportunities. And then, you know, they would start asking about like my age or they would start, um, you know, they would question, like ask all these questions and I didn't know how to answer and then I'd get flustered. And then like, I just, it just went downhill from there. And, and it's because they weren't prepared enough. Mm. Um, so for instance, there's like, um, I like, I put together this list of 20 ish questions that can make or break an agent meeting. Um, and so it's part of our, uh, agents program that we have and like, you know, being, and some of the questions on there, for instance, are questions like, uh, to be prepared to, uh, to answer like you know who are the casting directors in town that that uh, know you and like you or or who 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 brings you in a lot for auditions so being able to answer the questions like that or um hey if you um on what show or what type of character could you easily play and replace on television right now as a series regular like mm. what show would that be what character specifically because they want to know you know what where do you fit and do you know yourself are you aware of um like how you actually fit in within the industry landscape whether it's tv film commercially so um questions like that how to deal with questions that you know they're in this industry you're like in a casting you're not supposed to be asked about your age but i've been asked you know or i've been asked questions that are meant to get close to that uh having that answer you know and yeah. It's like you want to have answers prepared or some something in terms of at least there in the back of your mind uh, so that you don't get flustered. And does it mean that these questions in every meeting you're going to be asked? No, of course not. But it's like those are, you know, questions that I get asked pretty frequently. And when you have those prepared, um, like those same actors that, you know, first told me, oh, I, you know, I bombed previous, you know, great opportunities. And then like having done the preparation and, and really looking at, um, and being helped with how to craft certain responses, um, to be prepared, then they could go into meetings being fully confident, um, and just ready to assess whether this is the right fit for them. So it's like that two way street. It's like an interview on both sides. It's not just one sided. And, and that's another thing, too, is I, I find that a lot of actors put the, the rep on a pedestal. It's like, oh, I really hope this person likes me yeah. and I like me and want to represent me. And that comes from a place of being very powerless um, versus, you know, I have a lot to offer. And so does and ideally, so does this rep. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't think I would take my time to meet with them and vice versa. So they already see things in me. Um you know, a question I like to ask sometimes, and I encourage actors to ask is like, hey, I was just wondering, you know, what, what inspired you? What about me inspired you to meet, want to meet with me? Because yeah. then you hear what, exactly what it is that um, they saw in you. And if there are certain qualities, then to really highlight those qualities. And also like, you know, what do you, what do you see as um, the commonality in terms of the actors that you work with that have become successful. So then hearing those qualities, maybe you can dabble in some examples or stories of how, you know, how that's something that you have in you as well, mm -hmm. you know, do it in a, <laughs> and, um, you just got to be careful with how you, how you, you insert that. But I think that can be very valuable. Yeah, definitely. Um, I kind of wanted to get like, what's been your personal journey on, I guess, finding the right team to represent mm -hmm. you? Great question. Um, I've worked with a lot of different reps um, in LA and I've 
there are some that have been great and some that have uh <laughs> okay um it's funny you were talking about um because of you know some of the work that I've been doing lately that it's hard to see me in a spot of being of struggling and absolutely when I first moved to town my first agent ever I'm so excited about because I sent out, I did a mass mailing because I didn't know better. I did this mass mailing yes. to a bunch of agents and managers. My first was a spring chicken in Los Angeles. <laughs> My first agent ever who, and I signed with him because no one else wanted to sign me. So yeah. Yeah. I signed with him and he had like, he had a strong reputation like, like a long time ago. Like I think back in the eighties or something was like his agency's heyday. And when I met with him, there's a lot of red, red flags that I ignored because I didn't know better. Or, or I, what, and, what were some and, of those red flags? Um, we were meeting for an hour. He didn't have an assistant. And yet his phone only rang one time. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, that's a red flag. <laughs> like, why, are, why, why is no one calling? You know? yeah. um, but I was desperate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, um, I was like, well, whoever, like he wants me. So I'm going to say yes. Um, he, he, oh, another red flag. He told me he didn't believe in email, <laughs> barely used email. I think he had one. He just didn't like using it. Yeah. And in a time where electronic communication is pretty important, I just didn't know better. And so, um, that was my first agent and long story short, it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. How uh, long were you with that agent? Uh, a few months. Several, uh, oh, okay. Oh, several months actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, what if like you are with an agent like that? And, you know, I know people if that is in, doesn't believe in email. I would say run. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. Or, or, you know, like they haven't gotten you out. Do you think um, do you think you should stay with them until you get a better agent or you think you should uh, like just drop them and then like just seek until you can find a good agent? Great question. So first, before even before either of those things, um, I think sometimes again I compare the like some romantic relationships, like the same principles, to your agent manager relationship. Even though the agent manager and client relationship is meant to be non-romantic, meant to be purely business. So I would say, like in any relationship, I find that sometimes instead of talking about things, people avoid confrontation and they just leave. Yeah. You know, like I've, I've been, um, in relationships like romantic relationships where I got, you know, I got dumped all of a sudden I was like, whoa, whoa, wait, I thought we were cool. Like, <laughs> like, was there a problem? And it's like, it takes me completely by surprise. Yeah. And yeah. so I don't know if I'd recommend like, just because someone's not getting you out, I mean, like, you know, for a little while to just immediately drop them or to immediately start reaching out to other agents because, you know, I think it's valuable to have a conversation or at least an email that says, um, because it's a collaboration. Um, I think a lot of actors expect their reps to get them all the auditions. And I think that is not accurate and it's not, um, from then you're powerless. Then you're always going to be at the, the, uh, the mercy of, you know, only what your reps get you and your reps can do a lot for you, but there's a lot in terms of you giving them ammo, you know, mm-hmm. um, some people use different terms about the word heat. Um, ideally you want heat on you because the more like right now, um, because some of the projects I'm working on, you know, I have a, um, a gifted with Chris Evans is coming out in April. Woo. Um, <laughs> so that's, um, the next uh, studio feature that I have coming out and, uh, you know, working on the PR side um, and then like working on doing interviews and press and working with my publicist and, um, you know, generating some, some good press, like that all helps my team, you know, be able to pitch me on roles. And so I've, my reps right now are incredible. Like I've gotten so many amazing, like series regular leads, recurring guest star opportunities. It's ridiculous. And I'm so grateful. And I think it's important to be able to give your reps ammo. So it's like, if you're in a situation where your reps aren't getting you out, it's valuable to ask like, Hey, you know, what can I do to make your job easier? Mm -hmm. Um, And like, and having a dialogue and seeing like, what is it that's not working? Because it might not be them because just like in a romantic relationship, if you always think it's the other person and sometimes it is, 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah. Sometimes it's the wrong relationship and you need, you need to get out. Absolutely. But just like in a romantic relationship, I think sometimes people hop around relationship, relationship, trying to find this perfect relationship without ever looking at themselves and mm-hmm. seeing what can I be doing to, to, so that I can be in, um, more, um, uh, win-win relationships where it can be loving and nurturing same with agents and managers it's like you want to be the best client possible so but maybe focusing a little bit more on um, what you can be doing and then if and seeing if that shifts in terms of the results that your agent's producing for you and if by having those conversations and working um, and being proactive on your own and um, keeping the agent, for instance, updated on your career. And um, in, like an example, there uh, a previous agency I was with, we had yeah, a great relationship yeah. at the start, a lot of great communication. Um, we would, uh, like anytime I would email, they would get back to me pretty um, quickly. So pretty good. But then over time, um, you know, it deteriorated. And there came to be a point where, like, I would let, I would, I would keep them updated on things like, Hey, you know, um, I'm, I'm going in for a callback on this one, this TV show. So it was, it was an, uh, an audition that I got outside of them that they didn't get me. And I was like, Hey, so I'm going in for this callback and they wouldn't even respond. There was oh. a surprise. It was like, not even like a, Oh, that's great. Good luck. None of that. I don't know. I'm like, okay, oh, well, I didn't ask a question, so it's fine. Whatever. Yeah. But it's interesting. Um, the email they did respond to, funny enough, was um, I had set up meetings with um, a couple of the executives that were in charge of um, this big Netflix show that had a lot of that cast a lot of people that were in my category um, that I could see myself on. And so, you know, I was meeting with two of them that um, were in the um, the development executive side. And so I let my team know and I was like, hey, just so you know, I'm meeting with uh, these two and we're going to talk about this Netflix show. Um, you know, if there's certain insight that you have on these people, you know, I've, all, I've done some research myself. But if there's certain recommendations you have with me taking this meeting, just let me know. And I, there, it wasn't a requirement for any lender swan, but all of a sudden two of my agents at my that theatrical agency um, responded like immediately like, oh, yeah, so and so agent actually covers the show. And like and I'm like, OK, cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And then so I forgot what the other response was, but it was interesting. It's like I was generating, you know, um, like my own meetings with uh, on the networking side with people that I wanted to um, that I could see myself collaborating with in terms of their projects. And all of a sudden, like uh, like I remember like a week later, I finally had like my first TV audition through that agency in like a while. And I'm like, I wonder if that played a role like that. It was kind of like you know, it inspired them to want to step it up too, because they were seeing me be proactive and yeah. creating things on my own. So I think, um, long story short, make sure that you, you take an honest look at whether you're fully, fully contributing, um, to the success, um, that your reps can have with you because it starts with you. Um, and then sometimes, you know, there's some reps where uh, they won't they won't even meet with you if you have current representation. Um, and and some <laughs> I feel like some reps, they they don't mind poaching at all. So it really depends on the rep in terms of whether you have a current agent or manager that you're working with um, and whether you take other meetings. Sometimes it's good to just start fresh, you know, and like for me, um, I had parted ways with a longtime manager of mine at the very beginning of pilot season a while back. And yeah. And by doing that, rather than like, you know, first of all, with her, I had a relationship where we had, um, you know, I, we, I, I knew I wanted to maintain, you know, maybe even a friendship possibly after we severed our, um, our professional ties. And so I didn't want to feel like I was quote unquote cheating on her in a way by like going behind her back and trying to set up all these other manager meetings. I just, it just didn't feel right. You know, I didn't yeah. feel like that being, um, especially honoring the relationship that we did have. And so I, um, I met with her in person because, you know, we, I just felt that would be appropriate. I ended up crying. Aww. I left crying. Yeah. Cause it was tough. It was like a breakup. 
yeah. you know, and I, I really liked her. It just wasn't working professionally. Um, after a few conversations, you know, on the topic of like, what's, you know, what, what can we do? And, and me doing the things that she had recommended and it's still not really producing what um, I was hoping. And then that's, and that was what, like just getting you in bigger rooms and stuff or. Um, it just like, we did not see eye to eye in terms mm. of the types of roles that I should be going out for um, the way I was being pitched, the way I was being positioned. And so I feel like it wasn't, um, it was kind of working against me in some ways, even when I was getting those um, opportunities. Um, so yeah, we just weren't seeing eye to eye. And then um, that same afternoon, as soon as I left, I immediately went to, went and immediately started uh, reaching out to managers. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, okay, I don't have a manager right now. So let me go reach out to people. <laughs> wow. and- so, and it was a kick in my tush because it, instead of like, oh, well, I have a manager right now. So, you know, like I was like, no, I'm like, no, 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 I'm. Um, and so then I started setting up meetings and then um, started working with a different manager. And it's amazing. A lot of times people stay with their reps too long. Um, and that happened with me where I had dropped a, a different manager of mine. And then the manager that I, I mentioned I had that long-term relationship with that I really respected. Um, it's funny enough, I switched to her and that was the beginning of our relationship. And a week into working with her, um, I booked a TV show. Wow. Um, she had got me the audition for it. And I was like, wow, had I even waited a week or five days or six days to make a switch, then I went to book this TV show for sure. I went to, there's, there's no way. So um, timing yeah. can be really important. And I would say as important as getting a rep is like, um, I'm assuming you, you read my free ebook on Correactivate. I did. Yes. Yeah. Like it's the, really the, good. Everyone needs to get it. It's free. Yeah. It's a free, you can download it for free at Correactivate.com. Um, so, uh, in terms of like this whole agent process, I think it's so important. And, and there's also so much that, that leads up to preparing to even be sending your materials out to reps. Yes. Like you ideally want really strong materials where you have want some clips, ideally that really reflect um, your brand and what you do well and what you sell. And ideally um, it would be great to send, for instance, like one, um, one thing that you can send that can be very valuable is maybe a list of casting directors, producers, uh, agent, uh, not agents, sorry, casting directors, yeah. producers, directors, et cetera, that know you or that you're friends with, or you have a professional relationship with already. It's valuable to send something like that because then they see they're not work. They're not starting from the ground up that even if you don't have, um, you know, recognizable credits that you have relationships that makes it so much easier for them to follow up on your relationships because that makes it so much easier for them to help get you in the room because yeah. you already have that relationship um, already. And so that can be a very like valuable list to send. And when we've had actors send their list of relationships after they've really worked on the networking side, sending that list has made a, a big difference in terms of the response um, some reps have given them. So mm. like that's an example of like something that you can add into your submission when you're reaching out to a rep. Oh, so much good information. Oh my God, Jonah. <laughs> I'm hoping it's valuable. Oh, um, yes, it yeah. is. And yeah. I definitely want to be respectful of your time. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any closing remarks? I know I definitely want to, I want to give you um, also a little time to just any, any plugins or social media as well. Sure. Um, yeah, you can find us at, we um, share like tips and resources on our mailing list. Um, so if you go to correctvate.com, we have a lot of free resources on there. So like we have like a free online training, I think right now about um, like insider strategies to get uh, like a great rep for you. So that's a free online training that um, you have access to. And then also the book that you read. I'm glad that you liked it. Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, so there's the book, there's the other free resources on there. And then, um, on Facebook or at career activate, uh, same with Twitter, same with our Twitter handle. Um, and then, yeah, I, um, if you have time and you're intrigued by, um, when I was talking about legend and master legend, I just really want to like fully support Angelica Washington. As much as 
she's a, a wonderful human being and just been so inspiring to our community and just such a go-giver. She's helped people like she's incredible and she deserves this so much and her show is so great it's really a really good quality show that I think especially in this day of media where we're so used to seeing a lot of negative images and a lot of despair like I think we're feeling because of the world we live in um yeah. hope can sometimes be hard to come by um mm-hmm. and the show is about this this um DIY do-it-yourself superhero <laughs> who mm-hmm. has no like real power like he doesn't have traditional powers he's an older superhero that yeah. basically his superpower is he he believes in justice and he wants to do good and like he he's that type that like will um you know rescue a cat from a tree you know I mean? <laughs> and like stop a bully from bullying like a high schooler and it's just you know he it's coming from this place of like wanting to help the world and but he you know is very he's broke and he he like you know it, it's just this this story and in, in, in this in this world where we're so used to seeing superhero movies where like they have these superhuman abilities or like a lot of money or and you see this other side where it's like anyone can be a hero Aww. you know and I think that's a great message um so I support the show on multiple levels so um, please watch Ma- Legend of Master Legend and watch all the way through the end credits so yes. that your review counts. And if you enjoyed it, please write a review. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, Jonah. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Crystal. Yeah, and I'll be I'll put all your links and everything so that anyone and everyone that wants to get in contact with you and know more about Career Activate, they can reach out. Yeah. Thank you so much, Crystal. Awesome questions. I love talking. Um, to you about this and I hope that it's valuable for uh, for some people I hope so too I told you guys Jonah is a freaking business woman she makes stuff happen in her career and for other people's careers this is not sponsored or anything but I have been taking personally after I spoke with Jonah courses from the career activate program and It's already feeling like an amazing feeling, changing my life and all that amazing stuff Um, because you're just surrounded by other artists that are making stuff happen so you feel accountable for and you don't feel alone. And um, yeah, so definitely check out her website. Um, In the show notes, there's a link to a free course. So I mean, hey, who doesn't like free? If You just want to check something out. You don't have to pay no money, even though I think the prices are pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, so definitely um, and let them know that you heard from her and the Career Activate program from Rise of Triumph, from Crystal Torres. Uh, you can follow her uh, at Jonah Chow. That's J-O-N-A-X-I-A. Oh, I hope I'm not saying your name completely wrong, Jonah. Apologize if I am. And also, you can check out uh, Career Activate at www.careeractivate.com. There's also a Facebook page. There's a Yelp if you are like me and want to thoroughly check reviews or whatever. Yes, go ahead and do your research for anything that you um, might want to be interested in. All right, guys, so that's about it. And any more information, check out the show notes um, underneath the website in on your podcast. Uh, I, I put all the links so that you can check her out, Jonah, that you can check Career Activate out. And, um, yeah, thanks, you, thanks for listening. And, um, yeah, peace. Bye.